Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. It's here where we try to make sense of this ever-changing Arizona real estate market. It's getting easier. I'm just kidding. A lot of people are treating buying and selling a house like a stock market. Everybody wants to know, when's a good time to get in? When should I sell? Are we at the top? Are we at the bottom? Um, and my answer is, well, when are you moving? Now, in this market right now, I get it. People have been priced out. And I'm going to go to my mortgage chart here. 30 year fixed, national average running about 5.38. It's priced people out of the market. This is showing what your payments would be on different types of programs are out there. And many of you were saving to get a house. While you were saving, you were watching the price of homes go up. And then all of a sudden you get hit with this whammy where we've had one of the largest increases in a short period of time than we've seen in a long time. And you, you were just kicked to the curb. Now, if you're in this for the long term, um, and you've already purchased, you know, you just ride this out. You're not going anywhere. You got a 30-year fixed note versus back in 2007, 2006, people bought homes with adjustable rate mortgages and set themselves up for failure. So if you're trying to time the market, that becomes harder and harder as time goes by. We can look at it historically, and we can take a look and say, well, you know what? Real estate has this little steady growth where it just keeps going up and up and then it had this huge upswing here in 2006 2007 2008 the party was over all those loans everybody got they reset oh geez i can't make that payment down it went had this crash here we've been going up ever since now people that were waiting for a crash weren't waiting for a crash here they weren't saying up here boy i hope the market crashes the difference between then and now then everybody was saying, if I don't get in now, I'll never get in. I can't afford it. I'm, I, I mean, I'll never be able to afford a house. My neighbor just bought two. I can't believe it. <clears throat> now everybody's saying, hope it crashes. I hope this happens again, even though you don't see any past history that this has happened before. But boy, I hope this crash happens again because I want to buy right here. Well, could, don't know. We watch the numbers, we try to guess, we try to take a look at the data. But one thing I can tell you about down here is a lot of people, A, they couldn't buy because they bought up here and they lost their home. So now they had to wait because they let the bank foreclose on it. So the only people coming in and scooping them up were investors that had cash. And they had extra cash to be able to repair the homes that people tore up because they were going to the bank. I think that was one of the sourest things I'd ever seen. I get it. People were upset. You know, they're trying to blame, blame the housing crash on somebody, so they're blaming it on the bank. It's the bank's fault that they signed those loan documents. It's the bank's fault that their payment went up. So I'm taking all the ceiling fans out. I'm ripping all the copper out. I'm taking the air conditioning unit, and I'm going to destroy the carpet. And that happened everywhere. It was terrible. It was disgusting. So the general public wasn't going to go in and buy here. The investors did, and they hung on to them because they kept getting good rent. So they started buying more and more of them. So the investor traffic's running about between 21 and 30% right now because it was a good play. Now, the other thing to look at here too, when you look at a chart like this and you say, well, gee, it just went steady up. It's, it's a good buy and hold opportunity. Well, if you shrink it down a little bit and just go from you know 1980 to 90, you can see that there were ups and downs. This was after Paul Volcker clamped down on the interest rates and you know house prices went down. So they they do move around, um, but in general, real estate if you stay put is a safe bet. But getting in is the hard part, and that's where you need to kind of be wrapped in the numbers a little bit and take a look. Because right now, if you're priced out, I get it. You can't go anywhere. You can't get into the house. It's too expensive. Your wages haven't increased. You have no choice but to sit on your hands for a while. And what are you going to wait for? Well, you need to wait and see what's going to happen here with supply. Where's demand going? It's coming down. Overall, where's the market? Looks like my EKG. And how many homes are going under contract right now? This is the contract ratio. The number of homes that are up for sale and the percentage of those homes that have gone under contract are going this way. Well, they've done that before. They did it here. They did it last year, and then they kind of leveled off. So we watch it and say, where's it going? Well, all these other times when it went down and turned around and went back up, interest rates were going lower. 
Right now, interest rates are going higher, so it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. And one of the things we're looking at here is inventory is growing, and it's growing quickly. It went from this this week from 65.22 to 73.72. That's almost 1,000 homes, and we were going up about four or 500 on a weekly basis. So this week was a major, major leap in inventory percentage-wise, but... I'll show it to you again. It's still only 7,372, so prices are still going to go up. Until this number gets way up here in the stratosphere, like let's take a look at 2018 here. Until this number gets up there, well, it didn't pull up 2018. It gave me a fit here. It's going to work this time. There it is. There's 15,000 homes, so we'll see some relief then. I don't think we'll see prices plummet. I think what you'll see, it's going to take longer to sell your home. It's already taken longer to sell your home now just because of interest rates. It's taking some time. Now, I saw a Facebook post yesterday, and I normally don't get on Facebook very much. I can't stand it. I don't even know why I'm on it. I guess I just want to keep keeping tabs with some of my classmates. A real estate agent in a, in a private real estate group here in Arizona said, there's an agency out there that's saying next year isn't going to be very good. What do you think? And I wanted to respond, but I didn't. And I thought, are you not looking at any numbers at all? Are you not following it yourself? Because you're in the industry. Shouldn't you know? Shouldn't you know what moves prices up and down? Shouldn't you be able to inform your own opinion? Because aren't any of your clients going to ask you, hey, what do you think? And you don't want to predict next year. You can say, well, here's the numbers that we should be looking at. Right now, we're seeing inventory start to come up. We don't know how far or how fast that's going to go, but we could see some prices coming down. But in the meantime, they're still going up, and here's why. Now, if you're on a car lot and you're a car dealer and somebody comes up and talks to you, don't you know how many cars you have on that lot? Don't you know what the most popular model is? Don't you know what the average price is? Do you have enough cars or do you have a shortage? You're going to know everything you need to know on that car lot. And I hate to use car salesmen as an example, but I think it's valid. If you're in real estate, do you know your numbers? And if you don't, why not? Now, if you're a consumer a client, and you're thinking of selling, well, the first thing is timing. A lot of people have a specific date they want to sell now because they're having a house built, and they want to be able to time that where they can sell their home and get into the new build at about the same time. There's people I know their home's going to be done in August, and it's May now, and they're kind of itching, saying, I should probably put it on the market now because it's going to take some more time. So it's, it's the middle of May, I can get it closed by the end of June. Maybe they'll let me lease it back for the month of July. I can get in my new build by August. Good plan. But if things soften up, maybe you won't be able to sell it in May. Maybe it's going to take till June to sell that house. So those are the kind of decisions that people are making when they're looking at selling your home. Some people have to sell because they got to move. They're getting a job transfer or they're downsizing. But for buyers, it's a whole different ballgame. If you're going to buy to invest, you got to be able to take on the risk and you've got to have some money to fall back on and you have to measure your risk and investors measure, measure their risk every week. How much am I willing to put down? How much am I willing to tolerate as far as the price of the home going down before I decide to exit, have an exit strategy? They are the ones that should be going in and getting out, not you. So if you're just buying a home for yourself, you just need to figure out what your entry level is going to be. What kind of payment can I afford? How stable is my job? Where's the market headed? If it's a nosedive, you'll know it. Now, when people, when we got into a crash, nobody wanted to buy. Everybody still had that thing. Right. In 2011, 2012, people are going, I'm not getting in that game again. That was terrible. But we showed you on that graph that, you know, when was the last time a crash like that has occurred in your lifetime. But down here, nobody wanted to get in. And even up here, people are saying, there's going to be a crash. House prices are going up too fast. There's going to be a crash. Well, people that didn't buy in 2015 or even 2018 missed one of the highest periods of appreciation we've ever seen. Now, instead of looking at this number and saying, well, look, even if I'd have bought here at the peak, and if I had a fixed rate mortgage and I stayed put, you had plenty of opportunities here to refinance, get another fixed rate at a lower rate, astronomical opportunities here last year to refinance and get even lower, 
and the amount of money that you owed on your house would keep going down, down, and down, and now your house is worth more than it ever has been in the history of Arizona real estate, even if you'd have bought at the peak in 2008. So buying and staying long-term doesn't carry the amount of risk it does if you're trying to buy and get out in less than five years. So in this market right now, if you think you're going to buy, but you might be moving in five years, I don't think I'd buy. I'd rent. Rent is going up, but the rate of rental increases in some areas of the valley, rent is actually going down a little bit. So you're getting a little bit of relief, but about this much. That may change. But sometimes you're just stuck and you have to rent. So you can rent. Maybe you can get roommates. Maybe you can move in with people. There are some other financial op op or options. But buying and trying to get out too soon uh, carries with it some costs and some risk. So I just encourage people to be careful and make sure you know what you're looking at. Don't treat real estate like a stock because you'll get burned. I hope that helps. Have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com and smash that like button, will you? Thank you.